My name is Satya Pramesi, one of the hosts of Sea Indonesia, a documentary where we travel across the archipelago in search of and to highlight the beauty of it all. From nature, to culture, to people, and absolutely everything in between. Now, throughout my travels, I've learned many a great things about this country. And yet, there's still so much more to learn. And so, who better than to learn from than the man himself, Mr. Minister of Tourism and Creative Economy, Sandiaga Uno. Today, we will be talking about several things, namely, the projects undertaken by the Ministry to develop the industry in Indonesia, as well as the prospects of recovery after the COVID-19 pandemic. So, my Sandy, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank I, you so much for having me, oh, uh, Messi. I am more than happy to talk to you anytime. First of all, how are you doing? I saw you coming in earlier and you just came back, I think, from a run and I think a few basketball games as well. Yeah, uh, morning is always a good time for us to do some exercise um, and we did some base run this morning and play some basketball. Uh, also, it's the time that I spend with family because uh, starting uh, Later in the morning, it will be back-to-back -back, uh, engagement until probably close to uh, late in the evenings. And the routine has, uh, this uh, exercise routine has uh, kept my uh, fitness level and stamina that would be needed uh, to recover the sector. It was badly hit uh, by the pandemic, but I, I'm very intrigued with your last name, Messi, which is uh, uh, coinciding with the uh, FIFA World Cup. So you must be a big fan of Argentina. Actually, I'm not. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I, I used to. I studied in the United Kingdom in Birmingham, so I am a massive fan of England. Okay. Who I hope will win the World Cup this year. Who are you a fan of? Who do you support? Um, my team has already uh, packed their bags and went home uh, Germany. But uh, now with uh, Morocco just qualified uh, into the, the last eight, uh, uh, it would be rooting the underdogs, the Morocco uh, team. And I think uh, because uh, the ambassador's house is very close with me, so I just pass his house and I uh give him congratulations yeah it is quite interesting to see all the teams that have been surprising yes you know given the usual dominance by european teams like germany like uh, spain spain and both of them are gone both of them are gone and uh there are uh, a couple of surprise korea and japan although they didn't make it but they show very uh strong sides and I think uh, it's going to be a revival of Asia and, and Africa and it's uh, also in concurrent theme uh, in tourism as well that the underdogs destinations are now uh, coming up to support uh, Bali our uh, primary destinations and we have the five super priority destinations and we have the tourism village so it's um, uh, it's a little bit like a World Cup. Yeah, it's it's amazing to see. And I've actually been to one of the um, uh, destinations uh, in Likupa, where uh, we saw the cottages, the, the homestays, that were built made of wood, and they were just absolutely beautiful. And I think that, you know, staying in there, it certainly gives you a feeling of being part of the locals, you know, being completely ground uh, down to earth. I should say. What do you think uh, are the prospects of these five destinations, of, of these five super destinations, and what are your hopes for developing them in the future? Well, we have uh, invested uh, a significant sum of commitment into these five super priority destinations from Lake Toba. We built uh, close to eight new ports. Uh, we are reviving the uh, public 
infrastructure space, roads, we're building airports, uh, a brand new airports. We're dedicating 400 hectares of prime land for um, premium as well as uh, people-based uh, community tourism. So community-based tourism based on tourism villages are now uh, the key uh, revival of Lake Toba, Borobudur, Mandalika with the MotoGP and Borobudur. We just uh, now operating a brand new airport uh, near the sites. Also in Labuan Bajo, which is now a hit in particular with uh, millennials, um, with the Komodo Islands and Likupang. You just went there for uh, probably the best underwater experience. So we believe the next phase of the Indonesian's uh, revival in tourism will focus still uh, in Bali because it's uh, top of mind, number one uh, in the world. And if you uh, would say the wonderful Indonesia brand, it always uh, synonymous to Bali. But how we could offer um, additional experience uh, based on quality and sustainability. And these five super priority destinations would uh, be our offering, our uh, basically top of uh, the line, uh, we would say destinations for them to pick and choose, to extend uh, their holidays for uh, foreign tourist arrival. And for the uh, local uh, domestic travelers, which is now the backbone of the industry. Uh, it also offers completely um, personalized, localized, customized, uh, yet smaller in size type of tourism, uh, which actually also uh, segue into the creative economy scenery in this particular new destination. So all in all, uh, we're looking in a very robust recovery uh, we're ahead of targets uh, by almost double. Uh, we're targeting to uh, receive about 3.6 million at the top range of foreign tourist arrivals. I think we're in a trajectory to, to hit around 5, 5.2 million of foreign tourist arrivals. Revenue, 4.3 billion US dollar uh, versus 1.7 billion at the max, so almost three times uh, as well. Uh, and then uh, the uh, local or domestic tourist movement uh, is now reaching close to 800, uh, nearing 900 million before the end of the year. And this provides uh, the backbone for some of these uh, local destinations, uh, tourism villages, uh, community-based uh, sort of like revivals. And uh, the jobs, and it's very important because you lost, I mean, as a country, we lost more than 1 million jobs during the pandemic. With this revival of 2022, uh, we're in the process of creating 1.1 million new jobs in the tourism and creative economy. So overall, uh, not only the five super priority destinations, but across the board, uh, the tourism sector have seen some robust recovery. It's funny that you mentioned um the jobs and empowering the communities, as well as creating a sustainable landscape within uh, the tourism industry. Now, obviously that is one of the many goals that's set by the um, uh, tourism and uh, creative economy ministry to be able to establish and develop this sustainable tourism industry. But for the people who don't, uh, who haven't yet grasped the concept, of what a sustainable tourism industry is. Can you give them a little explanation as to what that is? Well, you stayed at the uh, tourism village uh, near Likupang, which is five super priority destinations. A sustainable uh, tourism uh, is the type of tourism whereby you uh, focus on the three Ps, the people, uh, the planet, and the prosperity of uh, the not only the industries, the destinations, but uh, the surrounding areas as well. So people, you provide jobs uh, to the local communities. Uh, you're staying longer. 
because a typical tourism, you just come in, in and out, take pictures, and and off you go to another destination. But typically, you stay longer, uh, so it brings more quality interactions with local communities. You take care of your ways. Uh, you don't uh, trash the area. You um, engage in food loss and food waste type of activities, uh, managing uh, local culinaries and making sure uh, the uh, uh, supply chain is, is being uh, strengthened. Uh, you also take care of uh, the environment uh, and activities such as agro-tourism, uh, the activities such as planting mangrove trees uh, near Likupang, uh, and also immerse in uh, local culture. Uh, and it's always nature and culture because the local culture is so rich uh, and you are impacting the local economies. You provide jobs uh, and, and you provide sustainability of that destinations uh, to be able to not only survive, post-pandemic, but also thrive. Uh, this is a type of tourism whereby it offers experience, memories, uh, and also uh, the long-lasting impact uh, to the three piece. So typically, you would stop at prosperity. So people, planet, and prosperity, we add two more piece, peace and partnership. So it's a, a long-standing partnership. And the typical of 3S, sun, sea, and sand, that is so um, famous being offered by Indonesian destinations, we are adding another 3S, serenity, spirituality, and sustainability. So this type of uh, new wave of uh, trend of tourism is going to dominate uh, the ecotourism, the sports tourism, uh, loving the nature, um, we call it special interest tourism, uh, whereby it's so customized uh, according to what uh, you prefer. And uh, the, who are the targets? The millennials, the Gen Z. They are 55% of our market. Uh, and if you look at the uh, focus by the government, not only we're um, focusing on the foreign tourist arrival, but also the experience for local uh, domestic tourists that is uh, increasing because of uh, a large uh, middle income uh, brackets that's uh, fast rising. This is an economy that is rising uh, one of the fastest in the G20 uh, grouping. Uh, along with India and Saudi Arabia, uh, Indonesia is uh, continuing to register um, a plus uh, a five percent higher in terms of economic growth. So eventually this middle uh, class will require healing. They want to do vacationing. They want to do um, refreshing. And tourism will, uh, will benefit from, from this revival. Now obviously contributing to the local economy of these communities and also to uh, give them a bit of exposure, it does tend to help to uh, perhaps like in your case, wearing um, locally crafted uh, shoes and that out there, which I must say I love. But one interesting thing I found in this garden was that you actually bought chickens from <laughs> village in Tianzhou. Can you tell me a little story about that? Uh, well, Tianzhou is a beautiful uh, district and we uh, developed one of uh, the most promising tourism village that is located very close to this, to this very uh, ancient prehistoric uh, even before Borobudur's a huge probably two or three times the size of Borobudur uh, an ancient temple that is uh, a, a site that uh, is in restorations and they one of uh, the local uh, economies uh, being supported is by this huge uh, chicken it's a rooster okay it's uh, this height and they were they want to give it to me and I said that I want to buy because if you buy it 
it actually improves and impact the local economy. So we bought a couple and then after uh, three months, now uh, we start having uh, eggs. Uh, so we're gonna have a, a family now raised based on a, on a rooster that uh, we bought uh, from a tourism village in Tianjur. Beautiful sites and I think uh, this is going to be probably uh, Borobudur 20 years uh, from now. It's going to be huge. Uh, we're building uh, infrastructures uh, and, and also uh, accommodations. Uh, and it will basically be um, uh, going to be a very promising destination. And many promising destinations, which I must say does make you quite proud of being an Indonesian. It certainly makes me feel proud. I have to say, just because of just the sheer amount of beautiful destinations. If I may, uh, some of the things, some of the other places that I've visited as well, uh, East Kalimantan. One thing that I found about it was that it was, it had, it has a lot of potential and especially the coasts in Maratua. Yes. Yeah, the, the reefs there. Just yeah, the reefs is, uh, uh, Berau is uh, one of the pilot projects for sustainable tourism, whereby every time you travel, Messi, and this is a hit uh, within the Gen Z and the millennials, is we are offering a carbon uh, footprint calculator. So if you're traveling, for instance, by, um, airplane and then you continue by a car, we will be able to calculate how much carbon emissions you're responsible for your trip. So, and then at the site in Brau, we're offering for you to offset that uh, by planting mangrove trees or mineral trees or any other activities such as uh, uh, waste uh, collections, waste management, that will allow you to offset. So you don't have this guilt, the guilty feeling that you're actually contributing to carbon emissions because being net zero is our target. And this sectors, uh, tourism and uh, in particular uh, tourism sectors, contribute 8% of the carbon emissions of the world. And we are in the process of cutting it by 50% to around 4% by 2035. And we are the first country in Southeast Asia, in ASEAN, that commits to Glasgow uh, declarations um, for climate actions. So we are in, uh, in a hurry. We are rushing to achieve 4% uh, carbon emission stop by 2035 and completely going net zero by 2045. So fingers crossed. Yeah, you guys are absolutely committing to reducing our carbon emissions as much as possible, it seems, and to sustainability, which is a great thing to see. I have to say, another project that um, the government is developing is the Bangga Berwisata di Indonesia Aja program, which, as we know in English, loosely translates to being proud to travel in Indonesia with the hashtag di Indonesia Aja. As an attempt to accelerate the nation's economy, through the tourism sector. So can you explain to us this program just a little bit and share with us your ministry strategy um, to assure the success of the program? Millions of Indonesians, especially during Christmas break or New Year's uh, celebrations, would be cool to be vacationing in destinations such as uh, Bangkok uh, or Kuala Lumpur or Singapore, even as far as Turkey, Europe, uh, the United States. And more than 10 billion US dollars is actually spent in these trips. So we are now uh, trying to change the mindset that it's actually cooler, it's more fun to travel within Indonesia. And we're uh, creating travel pattern, we're creating incentives so that you would uh, actually proud of spending your holidays here uh, in the country and uh, learning about new destinations, helping the sectors uh, improve, uh, trying uh, different experience. So 
this is something that uh, we are starting uh, to campaign very aggressively starting next week. Uh, we're launching this 13th of December uh, and hopefully it will change the mindset of uh, uh, Indonesians thinking about uh, going abroad for uh, vacationing by end of the year. And the president said it himself and I quote, he said that, well, I saw this uh, Indonesians, in particular government officials going outside, taking Instagram pictures and wearing, uh, you know, I wouldn't mention uh, the brand, but wearing uh, a luxury brand that is not uh, made by Indonesians and proud of it. Why don't we change that? Why don't we go to Raja Ampat, Labuan Bajo, Wakatobi, Borobudur, Danau Toba? Why don't we go to Maratua? Why don't we go to uh, even Cianjur in uh, the uh, tourism village Situ Gunung Padang and wear local products. Bangga Buatan Indonesia, proud of Indonesian local products, Indonesian made products, and Bangga Berwisata di Indonesia or di Indonesia aja. Proud to travel and do your vacationing in Indonesia. I have to say, I can't agree more, especially considering I have to, I'm so sorry, I have to mention your clothes again. They're just absolutely amazing. And yes, it is absolutely beautiful everywhere in this country, it's, but it's almost completely hidden. So it would be such a shame to not have those um, destinations exposed, you know, for people to see, to look at, to look on in media and think, I really want to go there and to, and to see that it's really close. It's much easier than going to, say, uh, Malaysia or Bangkok. It's much cheaper as well. And and if you look at, uh, sorry to cut you off, uh, right. Messi, in terms of the Travel and Tourism Development Index that is issued by World Economic Forum, Indonesia is ranked now higher than Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, and the Philippines. Why? Because we offer destinations that is focused on quality and sustainability, uh, based on nature and culture, and very importantly, the destination is inclusive. We are, uh, in, uh, we are bringing uh, small medium enterprises, women, more women, more young generations be involved in the sectors. So uh, there is no reasons why we should go abroad for uh, enjoying your vacations. Uh, look at this 17,000 islands plus and I was in North Malukus. It's absolutely gorgeous. The, um, you wouldn't believe that it's, it's in Indonesia and the sights, the sound, the vibrations, the local foods, the smell. You, you feel that um, uh, energized. It's, it's, uh, uh, I've been to many places and every time I go to these places, I meet people that makes me even more optimistic that uh, Indonesia is going to be a great country. Now I've seen, I've heard, I should say, that uh, you guys actually have some business partners uh, that are going to help with the, um, the Bangga Berwisata di Indonesia as well. Is that correct? Yeah, obviously we have media as partners and we'd like to bring you to destinations. Oh, we... yes, please. <laughs> Come on, Dave. Make the MOU. Let's do it. Let's go. <laughs> and we uh, we really hope that uh, a new way of uh, uh, promotion and promoting is bringing good-looking guy like you. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, and <laughs> great organizations like uh, See Today to destinations and promote. Uh, long gone are the ways of promoting whereby you. Uh, spend like spray bullets uh, because we don't have much resources anyway but we are so uh, optimistic that with a new way of uh, big data analytics uh, that has helped us target better and segment our market better uh, we're in the process of creating 4.4 million better quality jobs by 2024 so these sectors which is home of 45 million indonesians um, will
contribute between 15 to 20 percent of the economy. Right now, we're about uh, 10 to 12 percent, but it's going to go 15 to 20 percent if we continue this uh, track, if we continue to build uh, the infrastructures and train, uh, bring capacity building type of activities for the um, human capital uh, within the sectors. And I'm completely uh, confident that, that we're, we're going to reach those numbers. I certainly hope so too. Let's zoom out a little bit from Indonesia and into the world. So in late November, uh, you attended the WTTC Global Summit. If I may ask about that in Riyadh. Could you share with us some insights uh, from the Global Summit and how Indonesia does and how it could play a role in the global tourism industry? Well, thanks to the leadership of uh, our leaders uh, in G20 and now we're taking over ASEAN chairmanship, Indonesia elevated so much. Uh, we uh, were now recognized as leaders, not only in the tourism sectors, but also in uh, the global settings. The G20 was a great success, uh, and I think we should be proud, and it was a proud moment uh, to be Indonesians, whereby not only we have the beautiful country, not only uh, we have the resources, in particular natural resources, not only we have uh, uh, hospitable people, but we have the leadership now. So, where do we go next? Uh, at the WTTC, because of our role that is being viewed as a now key, uh, playing a very significant role in this recovery of, of tourism, uh, we're regarded as best practice in terms of the recovery. Not only recover together, recover stronger, but also we are recovering better. We are injecting this notion. We're not focusing on the quantity. We don't want to be uh, uh, focused on uh, recovery uh, that achieved the same numbers like pre-pandemic, but actually not giving the uh, impact to jobs, to local uh, communities and the local economies. So at WTTC, uh, we're very proud that Indonesia was uh, um, featured very prominently. And our strategy is actually now also being adopted by most of other countries in terms of the recovery. Uh, obviously, uh, we have a lot of competitions, uh, not only within uh, our region, but also globally. But because Indonesia is still top of mind and Bali is such a strong brand for Indonesia, uh, we could capitalize on that. And next year, we believe, uh, I think industry is now projecting to double uh, foreign tourist arrivals and also probably more than double in terms of the uh, tourism revenue. So uh, WTTC showed that uh, Indonesia is now uh, not just a um, uh, middle-of-the-pack uh, country, but we're, we're part of the leadership groups uh, within this, this tourism sectors. It's interesting that uh, Indonesia has actually been a source of innovation, uh, a source of inspiration for other countries to take uh, an example, of, which I think is really cool and it shows a lot about the, uh, the work that you guys do. And I think to learn about you know, sustainable tourism as well, and to learn about how that impacts the communities and what the, um, the, the ministry does to uh, continue developing the industry. It is all very interesting indeed. Masandi, I have one more question to ask, and perhaps that is, so far, what is your favorite destination in all of Indonesia that you visited? I would get into trouble if I name one. <laughs> but I've been to more than 125 uh, uh, tourism village across the country. I would say that uh, three of the top uh, tourism village that I enjoy the most is uh, uh, 
Panglipuran Tourism Village in Bangli, Bali, uh, that is regarded as the cleanest uh, tourism village of the world by UNWTO. Uh, tourism Village uh, Nglangeran in Gunung Kidul, Yogyakarta, which won Best Tourism Village of 2021. Uh, and uh, I would say uh, the uh, tourism village in Lake Toba, which is Huta Tinggi, uh, that's uh, really show the beauty of this largest uh, volcanic lake. Uh, so these three uh, are examples of around 400 uh, tourism villages that probably rank very high and about 4,000 overall tourism village. But if you focus on super priority destinations, I think these five super priority destinations are all my favorites uh, on top of Bali. And you mentioned uh, Likupang. Uh, we just got back from Likupang and I think uh, the ecotourism in Likupang is so spectacular. I was always thinking about underwater, but actually when you go into the uh, uh, the trekking there in the Pulisan Bay, as well as in the Likupang and uh, Northern Minahasa, it's so beautiful. This is something that uh, I believe we need to uh, focus more on and we need to bring in uh, partners uh, so that we could uh, really uh, accelerate uh, the recovery of the tourism. And I kept on saying this, but at the end of the day, is the livelihood of the people. It's the jobs, it's their income, uh, is how tourism creates six times more jobs than other industry, and how creative economy, that is a backbone of uh, uh, Indonesian economy, that uh, now number three in the world after the US and Korea, and we have uh, now produced great movies, uh, good music, uh, and also our culinary with uh, Indonesia Spice of the World program. We are uh, definitely in a sweet spot uh, and we, use, uh, we need to use this momentum uh, to even create uh, better targets uh, for the uh, focus on, we call it Golden Indonesia by 2045. This is Indonesia being a developed nation. It's all part of a big plan, isn't it? To, uh, to ensure and continue the development of Indonesia, as you said, to be golden by 2040. Masandi, thank you so much for your time. This was certainly one of the most insightful uh, conversations that I've had probably during my life. And I certainly hope that you viewers as well find a lot of insight and a lot of knowledge from this talk with the Minister of Tourism and Creative Economy. Sandiaga, uno, pasandi, masandi. Thank, Thank you, you so much.